When you go to print one of your worksheets, or even an entire workbook, it's the print preview through the file tabs print command that tells you how your data will lay out on the page or pages. As you can see here, my worksheet is too wide to fit entirely on a sheet of 8.5 by 11 paper, so it'll take two sheets and about half of the columns are going to end up on page two. As I demonstrate in our video on printing, you can use the various settings here in print view to change your paper size, reduce the margins, switch the orientation of pages, or even apply scaling to shrink your content to fit on the desired number of pages. Another way to find out A, how your worksheet will print out, and B, make changes to how the content spreads out over one or more sheets of paper, is to work in Page Break Preview, one of your view options on the View tab. Here, as I switch to that view, you can see the dashed line shows where that split, which put the last five columns of the worksheet, on page two occurs. The watermarks page one and page two in gray also show you how many pages you'll print out on. To quickly make all of this worksheet fit on one page, all I have to do is drag the dashed line, note my two-headed mouse pointer as I point to the dashed line. This tells Excel to make all of the columns fit on one page. A quick switch to the print preview on the file tab shows me more clearly how my changes will affect the printout of my worksheet, and I can make one change here, switching to landscape orientation to let the columns spread out over a larger area horizontally. I can also adjust scaling to fully utilize the page. Now, back on the Home tab, let's switch to a more demanding worksheet. This sheet has a large pivot table on it. Pivot tables are something you'll learn to make and edit in our other videos on that topic, but suffice to say they're a great tool for displaying data from various perspectives for easier analysis. As we can see when I switch to Page Break Preview, this worksheet has four pages, but the page breaks are at awkward places, cutting off data from the headings and titles that would identify it. I'll reduce my zoom a bit so you can see the whole configuration. If I drag the dashed and solid borders around a bit, I can fix the problem of everything spreading out over so many pages and having all the different parts of my data separate from each other visually. So as you can see, as I drag the lines to the right, I can bring all the data columns onto one page and then leave the job title, insurance, and salary boxes on their own page. Of course, you can return to normal view for editing your worksheet after you've made all your changes to the print layout that you need by clicking the normal button on the view tab. To test the outcome of my page break preview adjustments in a more visually accurate way, I can switch to print from the file tab and then use the preview to make any other changes to margins, print orientation, etc., to fine tune the printout. Another way to control what gets printed from within your worksheets is to establish a print area. I'm going to switch back to the sales report and demonstrate just how simple this is. You just select what you want to print, typically a selection you'll print over and over, as the print area for any given sheet is saved with the worksheet and will appear by default whenever you go to print that worksheet in the future. After making the selection, here I'll select the range from cell B3 through G24, I'll go to the Page Layout tab and in the Page Setup group, choose Print Area, Set Print Area. When I go to the File tab and click Print, you'll see that the selected area is set to print despite there being content all around it in the worksheet. If the layout of the worksheet changes and you want to change the print area, you can go back to the Page Layout tab and from the Print Area button, choose Clear Print Area. You can then make a new selection and select Set Print Area again to reestablish the area you want to print by default.